Alright, what's up guys, today we're doing a video on the top things to do after installing Ubuntu. Alright, so first off on the list, uh, an important thing to do after installing Ubuntu is to do any last minute updates which you didn't get when installing it. Because you're going to have to install them later on down the line anyway, so you might as well get it out of the way and done with. So the thing to do is to go up into the top right hand corner where the power button is, and click that, and click about this computer. When it loads up, it will say checking for updates down here, and then when it's done you can press install updates like that and it will begin to install the updates for Ubuntu. If you get a message like this, simply press install now, or you can remind me later um, to install them later if you want, but I recommend getting them out of the way and done with as soon as possible. So just click install now, and it will begin to install your updates. If you need to authenticate, type in the password for your Ubuntu machine, and then after the update's finished, you'll be asked if you want to restart your computer now or later. I recommend restarting now before we go on to the rest of this video, because some of the tweaks in the video will require you to do a system restart anyway, so just hit restart now and then I'll be back when it's done. Alright, next up on the list is to do some customization. So if you open up the Unity Dash up here and type in Appearance, we can click on this and then we can start changing some options such as the theme and the wallpaper. So down here we can change the uh, theme, so uh, Ambience is the dark theme of Ubuntu, but if we change it to Radiance, we get a nice light theme of Ubuntu which might be more suited to other people. Also here we have the launcher icon size, which will change uh, the icons over here, so we can have them a little bit smaller, so maybe 32 is more your thing, just to get a little bit more screen space. However, I quite like it on the default of uh, 48. And over here we can choose from some uh, default wallpapers, or you can also choose from wallpapers your own in the pictures folder. So we can just choose this one and try that. And you know, we, we can do a little bit of uh, customization. Also in the appearance menu, this brings me on to the next point, is in most applications in Ubuntu, which have um, menu bars at the top here. So you can see for Firefox, we've got File, Edit, View, etc, etc, etc. If you come from Windows and you'd much rather have them up here on the bar of the application instead, in uh, Appearance, under Behavior, we can go to Show the menus for a window in the Windows title bar, and then Close Appearance, and then when we open it up, you can see the menu bar is within Firefox rather than up here. This just makes it easier if you keep switching between lots of applications, you know, getting confused between what ones up here correlate to what application and what not. Following on the theme of uh, customization, no pun intended, we can do a little bit more customization using a tool from the Ubuntu Software Center. So if you go up to a dash and you type in software, we can open up Ubuntu software, and up here we can type in Unity Tweak Tool. This is a tool which we can use to um, customize uh, Ubuntu even more than usually. So after it's done, we can close out of Ubuntu software and you'll see a Unity Tweak Tool icon on here. Simply click on that and wait for it to load up. And you can see once the Unity Tweak Tool opens up, you have a plethora of options to change around. For example, down here under Appearance, we've got cursors, fonts, icons. So some people might want to go and change their cursor. For example, we, I can change it to this one, which I quite like. It's just, it's just a simple white cursor. Um, or we could go over to Fonts and we can change the Ubuntu System font to something a little bit different. So I'm going to go for, let's go for this one and select it. And you can see the font changes. You can also use custom themes too. If you go over to this user's GitHub page, which I'll have linked in the description, and scroll down, you can see some previews of what the theme looks like, and it looks very minimal and quite nice. Uh, simply go down here to whatever version of Ubuntu you're using. If you're using Ubuntu 16.10, you can simply go and install that straight from um, the command line. If you're using Ubuntu 16.04, you can click this, which just requires a few extra steps. As you can see here, it's just a case of copy and pasting these commands into the uh, terminal one by one, and you'll be done. So to do that, open up Unity Dash up here and type in terminal. Click on the first one, and then it's simply a case of copy and pasting the commands over. If you have Ubuntu 16.10, you simply only need to type this last, these last two commands into the terminal. If you're on Ubuntu 16.04, however, you'll need to do all of them. When you install it, it will ask if you want to continue, simply hit Y, and then Y again. And then after that, it should be done. After that, we can close out of the terminal, and we can restart the Unity Tweak Tool. If we load back up Unity Tweak Tool, and we go to Themes, you'll see some new themes we have installed. We have Arc, Arc Dark, and Arc Darker. My favorite is Arc Dark, so simply click on that, and you can use the theme straight away. As you can see, it changes the appearance of a lot of the menu items, and gives the system just a whole cleaner look in my opinion. The next thing I recommend doing is getting a better music player. 
The input one in Ubuntu, Rhythmbox, is all right. As you can see, it's here, the Rhythmbox music player. Although it doesn't have many features and it's probably not the most well-designed uh, music player in terms of uh, UI and such. So uh, let's go and install a alternative one. So if you go over to the Ubuntu Software Center and you type in Clementine, this is probably my favorite music player on Ubuntu. So simply hit install and type in your password. And then after it's done installing, you'll get an icon down here on your dash bar. All right, so if you click on Clementine on your dash bar, it will open up. And you might be a little bit underwhelmed by the interface at first. But don't worry, because Clementine is probably the most powerful in terms of uh, feature rich and options, which I've found so far. So initially, it will say your library is empty. Click here to add some music. So click on that, and you can choose the a, a folder where you want to get your music from. So I'm going to add a new folder and just choose the music folder by default and hit open and then hit apply and OK. And you can see I've already preloaded some music onto um, Clementine just to prove that it works. So here we've got um, just some music. So you can see you have your expandable artist view. So you can scroll through like that. And you also have the expandable and collapsible album view as well. So you can scroll through those a lot easier. Um, it does support album art, as you can see. Uh, we can play a song. And you can see we've got a visualizer down the bottom as well and volume control right next to it. And also on the left, we have much more views. So we can have file view, which views uh, music via the actual file browser. We have a playlist view in case you want to create a playlist uh, or something like that using from uh, the playlist view over here. You can uh, stream stuff from the internet and you can also uh, play from devices such as uh, music players, CD-ROMs, DVDs, um, flash drives, etc. like that. If you click song info, it will um, load information from Last.fm and artist info, it will load the artist information from Last.fm. However, that's not all. If you press Control p or go to Tools, Preferences, there are a plethora of options in Clementine. For example, you can even use a Wii Remote to control your music player, and if that doesn't strike you as uh, a very, very in-depth music player, then I don't know what does. But if you're more of a person who likes to stream their music, don't worry because you can go and install Spotify for Linux from their website. They have a guide on how to install it here and just all the commands you have to type into the terminal, like I showed you how to do earlier with the Arc GTK theme. One thing I would like to let you know is that uh, some music players will require extra codecs and uh, decoders and that sort of thing. So if you go into the um, Ubuntu, yeah, Ubuntu Dash and you search for um, updates and click on the software and updates um, choice there, you want to enable um, software restricted by copyright or legal issues multiverse. This will allow you to install things such as the MP3 codec and stuff like that. While we're here, the next thing to do while you're in Ubuntu is to install uh, graphics drivers for your graphics card if you have one. If you head over to software and updates and click on additional drivers, it will search for any available drivers for your graphics card, Wi-Fi card, etc, etc, etc. As you can see, I've just got lots of uh, virtual graphics drivers here because I'm running this under a VM so I can screen record it. But if you have a uh, NVIDIA or Intel graphics, you should be able to install proper graphics drivers from this menu and then press apply changes. This will result in better performance uh, around the system and such like that. So thanks you all for watching the top things you should do after installing Ubuntu and I'll see you in the next one.